Hello, welcome to a lesson on zero and negative exponents properties. So we're first going to start with the zero property. So whenever you have an exponent that is a zero, like here we have x to the zero power, it's going to equal one. y to the zero power equals one. Two to the zero power equals one. So anytime you see anything to the zero power, it's going to be one. So if we had x squared y to the zero, we're going to simplify that by doing x squared times y to the zero power is one. So x squared times one is just x squared. So when you're simplifying these expressions and you see something to the zero power, it just becomes a one. Now, on to the negative property. If you have x to the negative a, so we have x to the negative exponent, it equals 1 over x to the a. If you have 1 over x to the negative b, it's going to equal x to the b. You cannot have negative exponents in your simplified expression. We do not want negative exponents. So in order to change it from being a negative exponent to a positive exponent, we're essentially going to flip where it is in the fraction. If you recall, everything is in a fraction. It either has something over it or has something under it. And if you don't see it, then it's 1. So this x to the negative a is actually x to the negative a over 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip these so it becomes 1 over x to the a. Whenever we flip it, your exponent becomes the opposite of whatever it was. So if it's a negative in the top, we move it to the bottom, it becomes a positive. And I probably should be saying numerator and denominator, and I'll start doing that now. So we have 1 over x to the negative b, so we have 1 in the numerator, or x to the negative b in the denominator. We want to change our exponent from negative to positive. So to do that, we move the denominator up to where the numerator is, and we and we kind of flip-flop here, so we get over 1. Okay, so here's two examples. Now, whenever you're doing this, you only have to move the things that have negative exponents. So if it doesn't have a negative exponent, you don't have to worry about it. So let's look on the left here. We have 3 to the negative second, x squared, y to the negative third, all over z. So if we look, we can identify in our numerator here, there are three issues. It's 3 to the negative second, it's y to the negative third. Our x squared is fine. Our x squared is a positive. So because it's positive, we don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> so let's get rid of those negatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite my division bar. And I'm going to look on top. Okay, it looks like on top I'm, all I'm going to have left is my x squared. Now let's start moving some things. So that 3 to the negative second, if I move it to the numer from the numerator to the denominator, it becomes 3 squared. My y to the negative third, I move it from numerator to denominator, it becomes y to the positive third, or cubed. And that z in the bottom, in the denominator, it's okay where it is, so there we go. Now there's one more simplification, and that is that 3 squared needs to become a 9. And there we go. Okay, look over here on the right. We have a to the negative second, b cubed, c to the negative fourth in the numerator, and our and an x to the negative first in the denominator. So my division bar, and I look. What stays in the numerator of my fraction? That b to the third. What's gonna move from the numerator to the denominator? That a to the negative second moves here, becomes a squared. 
our c to the negative fourth becomes c to the fourth. So I've taken care of everything in the numerator in the original. I look at the denominator. I have x to the negative first, which I don't like because I can't have that negative exponent. So it goes from the denominator up to the numerator. x to the first, but we don't actually have to write that first, so there we go. Now, please note that all these rules can build on any of our previous rules. So you can mix our multiplication properties with our zero property with this negative property. So here's two examples for you to try on your own, so go ahead and pause the video and do that now. And here are the solutions to those two examples. Go ahead and pause the video to check your answers, make sure you got them right. If you didn't, ask if you can't figure out why. And after you do that, you are done with this video.